Welcome back. I'm Tedward. Welcome back to my driveway. The spring weather is starting to appear, which is nice, but welcome to the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD ZR2. It is huge. You've got the crew cab with the standard bed, the only way that you can get the ZR2 trim. This doesn't have the Bison trim, but that's all right because it's still plenty off-road capable and that's what this is all about. It's designed to tow and go off-road. This one has the optional 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel engine that makes 470 horsepower and 975 pound-feet of torque. It'll tow 16,000 pounds which is slightly below its non-ZR2 brethren because it's designed to do a little more off-road stuff so there's a bit of compromise in the suspension as far as I understand but my goodness it is a beast your eyes do not deceive you it is quite tall and we'll actually put the gx next to it for scale that's the biggest vehicle i've ever owned the gx 460 to normal people this is really big and it's a little cumbersome to park so we're gonna live with this today i want to show you around see what it's like to own and operate and actually drive on normal roads here in new england but I have such an affinity for these things. And even though as an off-roader, it's maybe not the top choice, it's big. And unless you have really giant desert trails that you're able to use it on, it may not fit in the tight, narrow New England off-roady things that say a GX would, but granted, ground clearance is uh, a different league over here. This might as well be a Caterham 7 versus a Unimog. Now, I believe this is the first time the ZR2 is offered in an HD package. So we're getting all of that crazy towing capacity, a monster diesel engine, and we're getting the Multimatic damper. So the suspension is really the thing that makes a ZR2 a ZR2. But if you go for the Bison package, that's when you start really toughening up these things. It's an extra $9,000, so you're going to have to make some decisions on that if you need it or don't need it, or if it's just the look that you're going for. We drove that out in Montana under the GMC name. We drove the Sierra AT4X AEV edition, and it's a mouthful. I think the branding on the Chevy is a heck of a lot better, if I'm honest, because you can just say it's an HDZR2. You don't have to say a million letters. It's easier. When you open the door, you get this great step. This is critical because two things. One, it's too tall for like a normal person to get in and out of. Unless you're like 6'6", six, six, you're probably gonna want that step. It's actually quite helpful. But two, you do not want that to impact the ground clearance of your off-road thing. I mean, that allows you to go and do some stuff without sacrificing that ground clearance. For example, the step on my GX, and look, I know we're not cross-shopping the two, but just for example, look at how much distance this takes from here to here without that side skirt, that's one of the main things people do when they're off-road in their GX is they rip that off and they change the bumpers to get a little more clearance. So that's major. Now it costs a little over $2,000 for that option, but I do like it better than the, uh, the fixed steps because then you're gonna end up losing that. Now they definitely know that this thing is big because they put steps all over it. You can use things like this. Look at this giant filler cap for your def and diesel. And this also has the optional lift gate, which allows you to do this, which is super helpful because again, it's really big and to be able to you know comfortably step in and out of this thing you've got a handle there we're not going to use that right now that handle is not my favorite it it works i suppose but like it's i don't know i just find that a little cumbersome um and it's a reasonable size bed but they don't give you the zr2 with the extended bed so you can't get the zr2 in all the ways that you might want um i think you know as an off-roader we're gonna go play around a little bit because i found a spot Oh man, but I always find it's a little cumbersome to put back. <laughs> I used to think, oh, I can't complain about that. I'm doing it wrong. No, I've done that a million times now with all these trucks. And I always feel like putting it down is easy. Putting it back up is a little awkward. Um, giant exhaust out of here, but it's not a particularly obnoxious or loud diesel. It's actually really nice to live with. Um, again, you've got this sidestep, and I believe if you do the Bison Edition, that's where that goes away, because you, you do lose some of the functionality when you put those um, AEV style bumpers on the truck. So in here, let's just talk price real quick. 
and we'll do some interior stuff in a minute, but I just want to show you what this is. It's $86,805 as spec. That's got the power sunroof, which is about $1,000. The gooseneck fifth wheel prep package, $545. Probably good to have that. Multi-flex gate is $260. So that's not crazy if you want it, don't want it. Um, but the Duramax diesel, $9,490. So that's a $9,500 option to go from the V8 petrol or gasoline to the diesel. I'd say worth it because this diesel is awesome. The tech package, 1775, and the power retractable assist, uh, the steps, um, that's $2,300. So I think this is reasonably spec. I don't think this is overboard. And for the area, the square footage, the acre of vehicle that you get for 86 grand, it kind of seems reasonable because the new GX 550, not that one, but the new one, you can spec those out to 85 grand too. And it's hard to look at this versus that. Now, granted, that has some luxuries, but this is, you know, heated, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, a better heated steering wheel than my Lexus, if I'm being honest. And I think it's got better drivability in a lot of ways. So if we're just talking about pure pound for pound, this seems like a bargain. The only problem is that it's so big and maybe you don't need the off-road capability of a ZR2 HD. You get yourself a high country or something else because you're just towing with it and that's fine. You should, but a ZR2 is a joy. So first, I just wanna show you for scale. Let's move the Lexus next to this thing because one of the reasons I didn't want to start this in a parking lot or in an empty space is just because oh, I love the fan on this car. It's like my favorite thing in the world. But it would do this truck a disservice to just put it out in the middle of nowhere and expect you to understand the scale. I mean, look at this. The top of my mirror here doesn't even go to the bottom of the mirror on the truck. So there you have it. I mean, look at this. I've, I've gone into parking garages with this GX and thought, ooh, this is like a, a somewhat low Boston parking garage. I hope I clear it. I don't know that you get full parking garage clearance on that HG truck. Look at this. I mean, you'd think the GX is reasonably big for normal people. That looks like a toy in comparison to the Chevy. The wild thing is when we get on the road, the drivability of this Chevy, ugh, it might even be better than the Lexus. So let's start up the truck and go for a drive. You can hear the whistle from this diesel. Let's let's take a look under the hood while it's running. I might need a ladder to get that back down. Oh my goodness. Well, there she is. Really not that loud. This is a civilized sounding diesel which maybe isn't what you want. Maybe you want something obnoxious and crazy, but the thing is, this is a day-to-day -day sort of daily vehicle, and it's really nice that it's not gonna just wake up your neighbors or your family if you're an early bird and that kind of thing, you know? It's, it's nice. Oh. Now, the other thing that's nice about a diesel is the range. I've already done like 100 miles in this thing, and I still have 480 miles of range. I don't have that in the GX, and I don't have that in the Civic Type R that you can barely see over this hood. However, it does have a decent camera. You have you know, the front-facing camera, the top-facing camera. You've got all kinds of different things you can do with these, uh, with these vehicles, including the tow hitch and the sides, and that helps for off-roading, it helps for towing, and geez, does it help with parking. To shift, we have a column-mounted shifter. I love that. Opens up some space in that center console. I've got a great rear view camera, but I also have decent visibility out of the back. But if you wanna see stuff that's low, like a dog or a child, you're gonna to wanna to glance over here and just check that out. I don't think I've mentioned this transmission yet, but it's a 10-speed Allison, and it's so smooth. 
it's always where you need it to be. And it's kind of funny that you've got a 10 speed in this thing because you've got so much torque down low and everywhere really that this could practically take off in top gear and just be a single speed and probably survive. <laughs> but that does mean that you're just always in a reasonable power band. You're probably able to sip fuel better than you'd think. Honestly, when I was driving this out to Boston the other night, I guess we are just gonna take up most of the road here. Okie doke. Cool, cool, cool. No detail, just take up the road. Got it. Um, I think I was managing almost 20 miles per gallon, which is outrageous and pretty much better than what I do in my GX with a 4.6 liter and a much smaller vehicle. So, you know, diesels are efficient, and if you use them correctly, you can hypermile them in a pretty outrageous way. Because I do my job in such a big variety of vehicles, this is not feeling as intimidating or scary as it may be used to. And I also drive a Freightliner Cascadia on occasion uh, to haul some race cars. And that's a legitimate 70,000 pound semi truck with a 44 foot trailer, all combined with cars in it at 70,000 pounds. I've grown to be less intimidated by the size of these vehicles, but that doesn't mean that I'm just used to it and they're all fine. This is a really easy vehicle to get in and drive. The steering response is instantaneous. It although has, you know, a little bit of a learning curve of learning where the corners of the vehicle are, it is not hard to operate. I think anyone who spends, you know, an hour in this thing if they're not used to a truck would be very comfortable in it pretty quickly. The brakes are very uh, like electronic feeling. They don't have a real feel for what's exactly going on. You kind of just go for it and hope for the best sort of, but they're functional. I don't mean they're bad brakes. I just mean, you, you know, you don't get a real tactile understanding of what's going on with these brakes. But acceleration is just so good. It takes a second for the turbo to spool up, but once that's going, you are off. This can do zero to 60, I think in 6.6 .6 seconds, which is outrageously fast for something like this. Maybe it's not a TRX and I get it. That's not the point, but a 6.6 .6 zero to 60 is what my 2000 Celica GTS did back in the day. And I know that's a bizarro comparison, but people were really into that time. And when I see that time on a truck this big, I gotta, I gotta give it some credit. Now this is a one-way street, so I'm not, I'm not driving on the wrong side of the road. I'm not driving in the middle. I mean, I am driving in the middle of the road, but don't worry. This is this is not uh, this is not dangerous. It's incredible the things that I need to asterisk in videos sometimes, or the commenters just go bananas. They'll complain that I don't use my blinkers when I'm clearly using my blinkers on video. You can hear it. It's like okay, okay. Everyone's mad about something. You can feel the mud terrain tires when you come to a complete stop. Like, bum, 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 bum. All right, let's uh, get into the power a little bit. Now that was wide open throttle, despite the fact that it's shifting for me at like 3,200 RPM. So that tells you that it seemingly knows where the torque is and where it wants to be. I don't know if there's ways to kind of get around that or make it rev out, but it probably just falls off after that. So I'd imagine that it's doing what it thinks it needs to do to give me as much as I'm asking for. The ride quality is pretty nice. It's firm though. The difference between say a Ford Raptor and a ZR2 with the Multimatic dampers is really the softness. A Raptor is a Baja car. It's going to be aimed at driving as fast as possible over uneven terrain and absorbing it. Whereas this is an off-road vehicle. It's meant more for crawling and that kind of low speed stuff. And it's, it's just not the same thing. And I think that's always been a disconnect because the Raptor became the ubiquitous top trim thing in the truck world where you're gonna go for the wild, cool thing. And this 
does not serve the same purpose as a Raptor, but because it gets grouped with Raptor and TRX as being the top trim, people expect them to be comparable in the same ways. And they're just not, you know, a TRX is 700 horsepower. This is not, even as a diesel, it's not. The Raptor's a Baja car. This is not, this is not a pre-runner. It's an off-roader. So you just need to know what you're buying and what you're looking at and understand that, you know, you're not going to just get the same thing out of all of these vehicles. So let's go test it out a little bit on a trail. I did, um, I did ask a cop if this was okay. Oh, we've got a, a puppy. We're gonna be cautious with this puppy. Now I can't even see the dog at this point. <laughs> All right, so I've already got a low hanging branch that uh, the height of this vehicle making me a little nervous, but we're okay. Good deal. Oh, but that's the thing. Like you can just take this anywhere. I drove this out in Montana and the correct size vehicle really is okay so we're in two wheel drive and it's struggling because it's big so what we're going to do is we're going to throw it in four low so let's go here blinking at me good And there we go, no problems. Very easy. Now we do have a rear locker, but no front locker, which is interesting because the Colorado has a front locker. And that front locker could really be the difference between, you know, stuck and not stuck in certain situations. Got tons of ground clearance. I can see this dog playing around behind me. Now this might be a little deep. This is uh, possibly slightly treacherous. I may have to turn around just because I'm not so sure that I wanna play this game. But I think if we um, hug this side a little bit, we may be okay. we go and I think we have room to kind of play over here without getting in too much trouble and look at that tons of ground clearance no worries about these rocks and this camera my goodness this is such a good insurance policy no need for the locker nothing i mean it's 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 pretty good so you know like like we saw going up it's definitely going to be a little bit of an issue in two-wheel drive but once you once you put it in four low this thing is a friggin' tank. A little muddy here, but again, not too concerned because I've got the mud terrains. And it's not that wide. It's certainly not TRX wide, which is helpful. So I'm not too concerned about hitting any branches or, you know, getting screwed up there. But yeah, that's it. I, you know, I think we've shown that it can go off road and do what it needs to do.
Now the question is, can you turn it around reasonably because of its enormous length? Granted, we don't have the extended bed, thankfully. We're just gonna keep an eye out for that fella and his dog too. Getting vibrations in my seat to tell me, hey, there's some things there. There we go. I'm not too worried about the brush though. A little muddy, but nothing this can't handle, but it is heavy. So, you know, when you're playing in mud in something this big, this heavy, you want to make sure that you've got a little momentum if you're not on a downhill because you don't want to get stuck there. And it's not going to do you any good. Sliding a little bit. That's more weight and tire grip than anything else. Now we do have hill descent control and I've used that on some very steep things uh, in Montana with the Sierra. So it does work very well, but I'm just thrilled that I can go play around out here and not really have any concerns or worries. Let's see, where'd our fella go with his dog? He must be in there. Um, real quick, you know, I've got my phone here. It's got wireless charging, wireless CarPlay, all that stuff. The wireless charging has not been working that great. I have to have it in just the right spot, maybe even out of the case. That's a little annoying. Um, I don't know that that's this system or my phone, but it's an iPhone in a very normal iPhone case. And so I have to just ding it for that. I would much prefer to just use the USB um, for, for that, but the wireless CarPlay does work very well. So presuming you don't need to charge, you'd ju be just fine. All right, so in order to not get T-boned, I think we're just gonna take a right out of here. Get some of that mud off the tires, not bad. And we'll go bang a U-turn down here. Continue our drive. Now back in like the 90s when I grew up, the people that I knew that had diesel trucks, Chevy diesel trucks, like my neighbors who were like construction workers and things like that, those things, you'd hear them start up a mile away. It was like, oh, you knew Dave was driving away. It was just part of the deal. Um, with this, yeah, it's not quiet, but it's not alarming. It's not gonna sound off to everyone in the neighborhood that you're up early in the morning going to work. Maybe that's what you want. I'm sure you could find a way to do that, but what I love about this truck is the insane versatility and capability without being obnoxious. And great turning radius. The usability of this truck, the drivability of this truck is just so shockingly good to the point where it makes my Lexus feel more cumbersome than this, which is like uh, mildly depressing. With very little effort under my right foot, this takes off. No, I think this is actually a really enjoyable thing to own and live with and drive. 
make sure you've got the space for it because it's going to require it. And look, like if we were towing that, I want to tow that. That's what I want to do. I bet I could tow the friggin' semi trailer, that little shorty with this thing. All right, maybe not, but still, it's just, it's so cool. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate this. I want to play with more off-road stuff. I wish we had more trails out here. We really don't. That's kind of what I got. Um, but, you know, it was pretty fearless doing that in, uh, in this ZR2. All right. That's going to do it for the Chevy Silverado 2500 HD ZR2. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I think one of my favorite things about it, too, is the fact that every time I'm next to any other Silverado, I'm bigger than them. I'm above them. And, you know, look, I'm a guy. Sorry, that's just the way she goes. Way she goes, bud. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.